Hey guys, Caleb Collins here with nestedphoto.school. And I'm here at this beautiful home in the village in Oklahoma City. It's a perfect home to walk through and share some tips and techniques on how to capture this with real estate photography. All right, so today I'm using my Sony a7S III. Love this camera. I've got my 16 to 35 G Master lens. So I've already walked through the home and made sure that all the lights are on. It looks like a brand new renovation, it's immaculate. So we'll just kind of go step by step through the process and I'll talk you through how I'm shooting this house. So I always start here in the entryway and walk through as if you're giving a, someone a tour through the home. I save all of my settings in my camera. So here I've, I save mine to, to the number one slot. That way I can quickly recall my settings because I'm constantly switching between video and photo. So this is my specific real estate photography setup. If you'd like to go through in detail, go to nestedphoto.school and purchase one of the courses where I walk you through step by step. I like to use manual color balance throughout my shoots. Make sure we're framed up here. I like to make sure that we're always framed. Uh, we've got the edge of the room. Most of our real estate photography we shoot in HDR. So I make sure that you know your blacks aren't totally blown out as you're photographing. So I like to shoot and show what it looks like as you walk into the door. So shooting it from multiple perspectives, especially off of the corner here. Get your tripod leg way back in the corner as far as it'll go. We're just a little bit too blue. You're always adjusting your Kelvin temperature for the space. So here I have my C1 button set up so that it can just quickly pop up my color balance and pull it, to, I'm gonna go to 4,000 Kelvin. I like that, that balance. Then I'm gonna walk straight into the living area up just a smidge, straighten it up edge to edge in the room. Get our shots, make sure, I don't wanna blow out those curtains because uh, you still want your blacks to look nice and dark whenever you're processing in your HDR photography. All right, so we're shooting for the living room space. So I'm going to balance over to this other side here. Very nice, looks good. Jump over to the other corner. My rule of thumb is to always hit the four corners and throw in a straight angle if the living room calls for it. So typically with real estate photography, you're trying to make the space look as big as possible. So there's definitely a difference between architectural photography and real estate photography. So with real estate, it's all about selling the space and not as much about showing off the design. We're trying to make the space look large and inviting. Okay, we got our living room shot. So now we're gonna turn and focus on the adjacent space, which is the kitchen. So we have this beautiful, massive island. So I'm gonna start ultra wide. And I like standing back. So then I can do a zoomed in perspective on the kitchen. So I'll kind of take it in, I'll kind of take it in sections. And then I might even zoom in even tighter just to get a, so this is how you compress a space together by taking different focal lengths. And for certain kitchens, it can really make a difference and make an impact, make it look better. So my rule of thumb that I always follow, as I move into kitchens, this can really go with any room that has countertops. I am actually raising the height of my tripod so that you can get a better perspective over the tops of the countertops. But I also do that because you've got this beautiful stonework that looks like a beautiful quartz countertop, kind of looks like marble. If you're down low, you're not gonna be able to see any of the veining or the tones in the countertop. So I am always raising my tripod up a bit higher than I normally would so I can capture all that texture. I'll start wide and then I do like to 
to zoom in to give a little bit tighter, more compressed look to the photo, then I like to step in, take one out at 16 millimeters, just to give a little bit more wider dynamic to the space. For homes that are modern like this and just have good natural light, you always look for those straight on angles that might just accent how the space is laid out. This is pretty fun. Okay, so we're gonna move in, throw my tripod here off into the corner, point back into the space. I like to have some element in the space to balance the image. If it's possible to frame it both on the left and the right side, it helps draw the eye into the image. And often people can lose the boundary. Okay, where is the boundary of this image? And you just kind of feel lost of where does the space start and where does this space end? And so that doesn't confuse the viewer's brain and it lets them know, oh, this is where the space begins and this is where it ends. Helps them gain perspective on the space. So there's a nice straight on perspective here over the countertop of the fireplace right over it. So I'm just gonna take that nice straight on to show how the spaces just flow together. That's really popular right now with homes, you know, as you're cooking in the kitchen, prepping for dinner, that you're not disconnected from the family. Okay, so working my angles, I would really like to shoot 45 degrees and then I like to shoot straight ons. So I don't like in between angles unless the furniture in the space really requires it and calls for it. So as we get here, I'd like to push forward so that you can angle back to the left and see down the line. I'm gonna back down my Kelvin temperature. And because I wanted to perfectly frame the edge of the door with the edge of the cabinet here. Now this is adorable right here. We've got this little window that you can see who's walking up to the door and these plants. So I'm just gonna snap a shot of that because that definitely looks adorable. We're gonna work into the other space here. Set my tripod legs as close to the countertop here so I can really squeeze in and get this shot to get up to 4,000 Kelvin. Yeah, that looks dope. And I love the windows and the finishes here in this space. So I'm gonna try and just back up, see how it hits the countertop. You know, really make sure you get your horizontal line straight on this because you don't want that little cockeyed perspective as you're looking at something straight on. You don't want your horizontal lines to wander. And we'll throw in one more from the right side of the sink. Nice, it really is looking good in here. Now we're gonna go and work our way through all the bedrooms. So the first bedroom I typically like to shoot is the master. See how the ceiling height drops in this room compared to into the rest of the house? So we're actually going to drop the height of our camera. It makes the room feel small when the ceilings drop. And so to help counteract that, we drop the camera to help the room feel bigger. Adjust our white balance and then we'll take our HDR photography, the pillows still have a nice exposure there, even at our brightest exposure. Now this room is empty, so typically you may only need one or two angles in here. Just for kicks, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in three different angles on this shoot. I typically try to choose all of the most interesting angles. If you can pick closet doors over just a flat wall, generic wall, and that's typically what I'm gonna do. We've got this mirror here on this one and this cool barn door. So I'm gonna step just out of the reflection on that mirror to get our shot. Now, one trick you can get when you're in mirrors is you set your bracketing settings. So we'll set our shot. Let me tighten the head down so that we can get our angle here. For me, I have it saved in my quick selection menu here, timer set every two seconds. And that way I can set the timer and run out of the shot. Awesome, we got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my timer on so I can go ahead and get some more of these shots where the camera would be in the mirror in the reflection. Set up my angle, 
try and get horizontal and run out of the shot. May check the mirror to make sure that I'm not in the shot. Yep, looks good. Good deal. Now I shouldn't be in any of these other reflections, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut off timer bracketing. Now there's some really cool elements in this bathroom, so we really need to capture them. One of them being this shower, and then we've got the tile down here. The tile looks super dope. So to be able to get that perspective, we're gonna have to raise up our tripod so we can throw our camera vertical to make sure we're framing it. Perfect. Be able to get that tile in there. Then we're gonna step into the bathroom. And so we're gonna have this reflection of ourselves in this glass. So we're gonna pull the glass open so that we can get a clean shot in here if possible. We're still dealing with some reflection just because of the nature of the tile. So I'm gonna swing to the side and throw my camera vertical to get all that tile in there. We're gonna head to the next bedroom. In a secondary bedroom, it's a little bit darker, a little bit cooler, so we're gonna warm it up just a hair. So we raise the height of our tripod so that we can get a little bit higher and get the perspective on the countertop, but also so we could turn the camera vertical so we could capture the tile when we threw our camera vertical. So now we're gonna drop the camera back down to make these bedrooms look as large as we can. So here, you know, throwing your tripod legs left and right around this door to get into the doorway crammed as much as you can so that you can get from corner to corner in the space to show how big it is. And since this is just an empty bedroom, that we will just get two angles in here. And typically how I choose is I do one from the doorway looking in, and then I go to the opposite corner. All right, we've got one more bedroom to go here. Because there is a little bit less natural light in here, it does have more of an orange hue, yellow hue because of the lights. Warm up that color balance just a little bit. So that was just a little bit on the dark side for the HDR, so I am going to brighten that up a bit and it was still a little bit too yellow, so there we go, much better. And now shoot in the opposite corners. So if I shoot Dory looking in, then I go to the far corner to get my other perspective of the room. Next is the bathroom. This is kind of a interesting bathroom to shoot, walkway into the space. So I normally don't take this angle, but it's got this kind of fun rug here. So I figure I might throw it in. You know, darken it down a bit because it's so much brighter in this space. Then we'll put our tripod legs as close to the edge of the wall here as possible. Majority of the time I'm shooting at 16 millimeters because I want the space to look as big as we can. It would be good to throw a vertical in here. It's just a small space. You can see what that looks like. So move forward just a smidge. Get that towel out of the shot. Try and keep it straight. Very nice. So we'll cream ourselves on back in here. So I'm gonna tilt my tripod leg to get my camera as much out of that shot as possible. And me, always try to keep your verticals straight up and down. Because if you don't do that, then it can really make the room feel like it's falling over. And you don't want that. You don't want to make someone seasick while they're looking at the photos you took of this real estate. It can really distract from the home. Okay, so to capture this tub, because it's so low, and it's kind of a fun feature, uh, we dropped the tripod legs even lower to grab this tub shot. So let's kind of see what we're working with here. We're just a little bit cocked to the side, so I'll throw the tripod this direction. Okay, we're still a little off center, so keep, keep moving it over until we can kind of center up that tub to kind of get a nice perspective in here. So we just finished photographing all of the interior of this home. And so now we're gonna go out and do the outside. For the exterior, I always raise the height of my tripod up. You're not dealing with any ceilings. You can actually raise up higher to get better perspective on the yard. In my opinion, the home looks more attractive when it's at a standard eye line versus if you're down low close to the grass. We're starting here 
on this perspective from the porch looking out and we'll have this glass door here. We do have this, this awning here. We're really too high. So we're actually gonna drop the legs back down so we can get that lower perspective to still make it look like a nice big porch. Uh, you can see how blue everything looks because everything is just so much more yellow. So now that we're outside, you've gotta adjust your color balance. Rule of thumb minimum, I take it up to 5600 Kelvin, which is the technical Kelvin rating for daylight. And especially if you have something that's yellow or orange that's on a roof line, help, it'll bounce down yellow light. And so I typically go uh, 5600 Kelvin for my outside stuff that has a covered patio. And then normally I'll shift to 6000 Kelvin for all of my other exterior images. So we are in the reflection here of that door, but since we're outside, it's gonna be easier to Photoshop it. And so we'll Photoshop that later. The gooseneck can get my tripod high enough to get this porch shot. So grabbing that there. And as we step back from the home, then I will lengthen my tripod legs. Typically, I'll do you know 45 degree angles of back porches. Sometimes there'll be a cool walkway or a design element that a straight on angle would look better. And so then I'll throw it into the shot as well. So same rule of thumb here, I will go corner to corner and shoot 45 degree angles. So here's where I'm bumping up to 6,000 Kelvin since we're out of that being near to the home. It gets a little bit cooler as you get out into nature with all the greenery. Awesome. We'll step back, get our shots. And this, there is this massive tree right here. So I'm actually gonna step in just in front of that huge tree, just so we get a better perspective of the house itself. Now I'm gonna grab it from the corner that's near the house to just to show perspective on how big this yard is. Back across here, we're gonna be able to show off this nice porch. Awesome. So same rule of thumb here with exposure. I have the dark areas bright enough that you can clearly see into them, but you don't want them all milky and washed out. Or when you go in to do your HDR processing, it can really corrupt your preset and not make it look as flattering. Cause some weird processing errors. All right, so darken a little bit. It's a little brighter on this side. Looks good. Bush right there was kind of covering up a section of the house. So I'm gonna actually step to the right just a little bit to just show off a little bit more of the home into this backyard area. Got one more corner to hit of this backyard before we move to the front yard. So I'm constantly checking my balance bubble. And what's great about this camera is it just shows it off right on the screen. Okay, so we finished all the backyard photos. Now it's time for the front yard. I like to start across the street, looking back towards the home. For me, this really helps me get perspective on the angles and I'll kind of work my way into the front door. Shows off different angles that could be more flattering for the home when you start further out and then work your way in. For our front yard shot, I'm always raising the tripod up to its highest height and it gets up to about my eye line so that you get a decent perspective. So I've actually crossed across the road and up on the next curb. So that way I'm a little bit higher and get a little bit better perspective as I'm photographing. Then I always shoot at 16 and then I zoom in to make, to get a tighter perspective of the home. Sometimes when there's compression on the photo as you're zooming in, it's much more flattering to dimensions of a house. Walk in at 16 millimeters, it really exaggerates angles because you get that kind of barrel distortion effect. Then I always do a right angle shot. So I kind of step off to, this, to the side where the driveway is not, because grass is always more attractive than concrete. And we kind of had a curb in that shot, so I'm gonna step in just a little bit tighter to fill the frame with the home itself. Now I'm kind of working my way in, like I said, 
So now I'm gonna work in towards this front walkway and into the front porch area. As we move in, we're gonna have to brighten our exposure to make sure we are showing off uh, the darker areas of the porch. Now I am actually lowering the camera because as we get into uh, what porch, there's this overhead piece. And so you don't want to feel like you're visually, your head is going to bump into that. And so I'm lining up so I don't see myself in the reflection. Now we cut off that roof line just a little bit and I didn't like that. So I'm going to back up a hair so I can get the whole roof line in the shot. Perfect. And then we'll punch in, we'll try to get just out of the reflection here so we can kind of get a right angle from the other side. Nice, that was a fun angle. And then we'll kind of step in here, drop the tripod down just a little bit more and get another shower to brighten it up just a hair more to be able to see into that. Now this window is really cool right here. So I am just going to come just outside of the reflection and I'm going to shoot it here, make sure our verticals are all good. Just so we can get that perspective of this kind of cool glass here in the entryway. This home is an ideal candidate for detail photos. Buy our course on real estate photography and we go in depth with how to shoot, edit, process, correction, and learn all those tips and tricks that I use as a professional real estate photographer for the last decade. I'll see you next time.